Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're here for the very first time it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera, we're British, early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money-saving life here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Sunday we bring to you an aspect of our private life, the things that we're up to the things that we do to save money. It's June and June and July are two of our six no spend months a year. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Our rationale behind that, why we do it, what we hope to achieve, and, and how it could help you as well if ever you want to do your own no spend challenge. Now you could be watching this for the very first time, so I'm gonna give you some background on the way we live frugally and run our finances to start with. So we know every penny that's coming in, we get paid on three separate payments per month on the 15th, 22nd, the last day of the month. And every single month, due to our income fluctuating, it goes up and down. It can vary as much by 500 euros a month. So what we do is we start off with our figure and with debt and mortgage free, remember. We start off with that and we take 10 or 20% of that figure and we put that away immediately into long-term savings. Secondly, we know all of our sinking funds are short-term savings goals. So things like our property tax we pay once a year, all those once a year bills. We have all of those figures, we've put them all in one pot, we've divided all of that by 12, and that's how much we save to pay those bills every single month. We call those our sinking funds. Consequently, it's about 650 euros a month. And then because we pay cash for our car, we'll buy a new car in three to five years time, we put aside 200 euros a month towards our car. And then as our living expenses, our living expenses have a slight variation each month, but they're usually between 950 and 1,000 euros a month. And that is just to live. Our food, our bills, our running our car, looking after our dogs, all of those things. And then we take those figures, we add those together, we take them away from the original figure and the money we've got left, spare money, and some months it is zero, but some months it's somewhere between 200 and 500 euros. That is discretionary spending. So let's have a little chat now about what people around the world, all of these people do with their discretionary spending. <laughs> budget can kind of forget sometimes that all of that discretionary spending are what I in finance terms call little drips, those little drips of money that just kind of drip away a little bit of time, like money leaking out of your financial system in your family, however you organise your finances. And I had to have a think, and I did ask people as well as around the world, what are people spending their money on? Where is their money going? Well, there's always the usual ones, aren't there? What I would call bits and bobs. The bits and bobs that you can pick up on a day-to-day. -day. You know, you go and get car fuel, you pick up a few bits and bobs. A couple of ice creams, a few bars of chocolate, packets of chips, of crisps, of snacks. You pick things up when you just go and fill up with your bits and bobs. And then there's the bits and bobs when you go to the supermarket without a list and you're wandering around and things take your fancy and bits and bobs all float their way in, don't they? They just kind of float down from the shelves and end up in your shopping basket. Snacks and goodies and cakes and treats and all of those things just float into your basket. And then there's what I call the sort of the spontaneous impulse purchases that people have. You know, they're scrolling through their phone, those things that they like these days. Vinted, Shein, uh, those companies that send you stuff straight from China whose name's Timu, all these people, they love a bit of Timu. I've had a look at Timu, 
There's all sorts of things in there that could catch your eye if you weren't on a budget, I tell you, all sorts, because you think to yourself, well, that looks cheap, that's a bargain, could catch your eye, couldn't it? So there's all those things as well. And then there's people who've got a mobile phone in there and they play games, they play games, and they need to pay to play these games because they're not all free, are they? So all over the world, people are spending their money. And then, and then, because you don't even need to get out of your chair anymore, do you? You can just sit there and press at a button and ding dong, food can arrive to your house, can't it? Just, just turn up. And then there's the people, and I kid you not, they do this. They're sitting in a house where there is coffee and a kettle and a coffee machine, and they get out of their house, they get in their car, they drive somewhere, they get a coffee, and then they take it back to their house. It's like ordering food, isn't it? They're in a house where there is food and they ring someone or ask someone to bring food to their house where there is already food. So this is where people, you know, their money is going. It's not making them bad people. This doesn't make them bad people in any way. It makes them a bit rubbish with money. That doesn't make a bad person, does it? So I'm looking through my list again of where people's money goes. Gardens, if you've got a garden, if you're like me and you've got a garden and you love your garden, money can literally fly away from you if you do not have a garden budget. Our garden budget is 300 euros a year. It's gone now, it's gone for the year. That's it, garden budget, bye. It's been spent, no more can be spent. But you could, every time you go into the garden centre, go lovely plants, oh, a lovely ornament for the garden, beautiful things. And if you're like me as well, and you like going to the charity shop and you haven't got an absolute set nailed down budget for that, you can go in there and go in there and you can come back knickknacks and clothes and all sorts of things, couldn't you? So all over the world, this is what people are spending their discretionary budget on. In short, that's the bit on your budget that kind of needs a bit of a look at if you're gonna take part in a no spend challenge. What am I saying? If you want to do a no spend week, a no spend day, a no spend month, a no spend however long you want, you've just got to stop buying crap. Simple as that. Because that is where our money goes. We know the bills are important. To eat healthily is important. To do those things, they're all important, aren't they? To have a decent standard of life the way we want to live. And we all know, and I am guilty as the next person, of buying the occasional pieces of crap. I had a good clear out of the house yesterday and took stuff to the charity shop. Most of the stuff originally came from a charity shop. You know what they say, one man's junk, you can buy it and bring it home and it becomes your junk. So there you go. There's my advice to the whole world there of how you deal with a no spend day, week or month is you stop buying crap. Let's get into five easy hints and tips to master, nail down a no spend challenge. Number one, determine your end goal. And I say to you every Sunday, this is where we share an aspect of our private life. And we're gonna share with you that we want to put aside an extra 2,000 euros this year to top up our savings. Just need to get some more in there to cope with the cost of living. And if anything's needed, goes wrong, top up the emergency fund, anything like that, everything costs more. Everything costs more. So that's our end goal. What would be your end goal? If you were to do a series of no spend challenges, weeks, days or months, what would be your end goal? What would you want to do? Would you want to clear a credit card debt? Would you want to save up for Christmas? Would you want to save up to pay to get some work done to your house? I don't know, get your bathroom repainted. What would you want to do with it? So number one, determine your end goal. Number two is to budget for your essentials. You know what your essentials are, we know what our essentials are. We're pretty well stocked up, 
So in a no spend month like this month, we can have a low spend month at the supermarket. That's one thing that we can do this month. Neither of us need a haircut this month, so that's not on the budget this month. The usual things are though, we're still gonna to need to put fuel in the car. We are still going to need to pay all our bills. And you're gonna ask me, Jane, what would you do if there was a birthday or an anniversary or any of those things in your no spend months? And as I say to you, this is where we share an aspect of our private life. Within our 650 euros a month that we save, one part of that is for birthdays and Christmas. So we save an amount each month for those. And if anybody's birthday comes up in any of these months, we've already pre-saved the amount of money that we put aside for each gift. So I hope that answers your question. is a really important trick or tip or hack to have in your frugal toolkit when you're having a no spend challenge, whether that's a week, whether that's a month, or whether that's two months like we do. It's to know all the things that you can do for free in your local area, all the places you can go for free. Now in June and July, fingers crossed, we're gonna get good weather for these next couple of months. And we know all the beaches that we can go to for free, where the parking is free, where we can take a packed lunch. We know the lakes that we can go to for free. We know all the beautiful old towns and villages we can visit that have free parking. So look out for all the things that you can do for free and leave me a comment below. Where do you go for free? What do you do for fun that's absolutely free? is to make a list of unfinished projects or unfinished jobs that you've been putting off for weeks, months, or even years that you need to complete. Now in my next two months, June and July, I hope to get two quilts finished. I've got one top made that needs quilting, and I have one that's all in the cut up bits that needs sewing together and turning into a quilt top and then quilting. We've got garden projects to do. We have got fallen trees to cut up. We've got a really big garden to get tidy and clean and lots of bushes and shrubs to cut back. And I've got the river to eat. Oh, the list goes on. I'm sure your list is exactly the same as well. So in a no spend challenge, it's a really good thing to have a list of projects to do. Leave me a comment below. If you were to have a no spend week or a no spend month, what things need doing around your house or around your property that you've been putting off? My fifth and final tip is to catch up with family and friends. We're all too busy, aren't we? There are so many things that we're always busy doing. And in this couple of months, it's a really great time to catch up with people. Call on them, make appointments with them, invite them round for a cup of tea and a piece of cake or a biscuit or a cookie. Catch up with them, arrange to have a messenger video call with them or a Skype meeting with them. Catch up with people. It's in our busy lives where we are just so rushed. It's so easy to neglect the people that we really love and want to spend time with. So there you go, absolutely cheap as you get, invite them round for a cup of tea or call in on them, catch up with family and friends. So to sum it up, to make a no spend challenge easy, on your day, on your week, on your month of your no spend challenge, it is the day when you are gonna commit are only buying the things that you need and not buying any of the crap, any of the junk, any of the frippery and the bits and bobs that are very easy to buy. And I promise you, it will make a difference. 
And as you get used to doing that, that you do one month and then it becomes two months a year or three months a year, or like us, and it turns into six months a year, it gets to be really easy because it's an all or nothing situation. You're either shopping or you are not. And when you are not, it's just so easy. You're just doing the five other things that I suggested and that the month is over in no time at all. And at the end of this month, we're gonna have an extra 450 euros to put aside into our savings fund and just about the same again, if our income is on target, just about the same again in July as well. An extra 900 euros going into our savings is a massive achievement in a cost of living crisis, isn't it? We're really proud of ourselves. And if your no spend challenge means that each Sunday that you don't spend any money of your discretionary spending, and every Sunday that you put aside 10 euros, dollars or pounds a month and you don't spend it, the end of the year, you've got 520 pounds, dollars or euros that you've saved up just with a one day no spend challenge. Let me know, are you up for a no spend challenge? Do you do them at all? If so, how many weeks or days or months do you do? Tell, and don't forget, let us know, what would be your goals if you were to do it for a no spend challenge? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, go on, hit the like button and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.